you're, you're doing this real world work in law school. And of course, you're also doing the typical law school studying and exams and casework and such. Um, how, does that, how, how does that differ from what you did in undergrad or in your master's program? And what would you recommend to students who are not yet in law school, but looking to get more of a handle on the academic side of things? Oh my gosh. Uh, definitely it is a different beast is what we like to call it. So in undergrad, I feel like it was definitely a lot more relaxed. You know, you like go to school or you go to class, you might have like a few papers to write here and there studies to or tests to study for. But getting to law school, definitely our school would tell us that they break us down to build us back up and they are not lying. <laughs> because I find, especially in classes, the Socratic method, which for anyone watching who doesn't know what it is, uh, it's where they will randomly call in a student. You have to stand up in front of a class of 45 to 50 plus students and answer and they will literally just hammer you with questions. So I, I, my biggest like, advice is to say, get comfortable with being uncomfortable because I am getting ready to graduate in a few months and I still have moments where I get butterflies in my stomach, but definitely the workload is a ton more than I witnessed throughout my master's program, throughout my undergrad. It's the amount of reading that we have to do depending on how many classes you're taking. My school is one of those that actually allows um, weekend night and so depending, like you can actually go part-time. I'm not familiar with how a lot of other law schools, I believe they maybe only allow you to go full-time. I'm not really sure. So depending upon the course load, you're looking at at least 50 to 100 pages of reading, and then you need to brief the cases, which briefing requires you, obviously, to read the entire thing. You need to find the issue, the rule, why is the court ruling a certain way. So aside from just, you know, autopilot reading everything, you actually have to sit down and comprehend this information that you're reading, and you do this all before you get to class. So that was definitely a lot different um, than you can't just sit back in class and witness the learning anymore. You're actually pulled into it and it's not something that you could just sit there and just take in. Well, the Socratic method, it almost sounds like it's hazing a bit, but it's also like forcing you to really engage, right? Like you can't, you can't be asleep during that. No, you can't. And it's like, to be honest, I had the worst anxiety during my first term of school because, you know, I had let's see. So when I had graduated undergrad, it was in 2009. So I started back up at law school in 2017. So I had that good chunk of time between actually physically being in school because I did get my master's online. So when you're put into these stressful situations and, you know, I think it's, we hype ourselves up, like we're in law school, we're in law school. And then, you know, you get called on and you think that you're just going to get shredded. So I had the worst anxiety through the first probably year that I was at school. But eventually I told myself, you know, even if you get called on, even if you answer wrong, you still have all your fingers, you have all your toes and you're gonna walk out of that classroom the same way you walked it in, so. <laughs> so it sounds like you got, you got comfortable being uncomfortable. I did, oh my gosh, I've had some, there's some stories, especially students that are unprepared in class, never go to a law school class being unprepared. It is one of the most brutal things that I've seen and so uncomfortable for everyone that has to witness it as well. So basically the only, the only uh, inoculation against having a massive uh, failure is just be prepared, do the readings, do the mm -hmm. assignments so that you will be ready if they call on you. Yes, it is because it's also like, I feel like it ties in so much else to every, to a lot of other things besides like just being or appearing smart in class. Those professors, they talk. And so if you're known as that student in class that is not prepared or, you know, doesn't do the work, they're going to, like, there's going to be other, they're going to talk about you and then they're not going to want to recommend you for, you know, maybe a position that came open. So that's something that you want to be mindful of from the first day you walk through those doors. So you just have to basically be actively engaged and do the work, but yes. you can't, you can't kind of sit in the back of the room the way you might have an undergrad. No. <laughs> because <they> <laughs> they will find you. <laughs> they can tell who's paying attention and who's not. Of course. Now, is this the Socratic method? Is this something that could come up in any law school class like Civ Pro, Con Law, you know, Tax Law, Crim, crim like could it come up in any of those? Definitely. I think it, a lot of it depends on the professor as well, because I know that at my school, some professors 
aren't as, I guess you say, harsh as um, other ones are. Some professors prefer to brief their own cases. So I think it depends. Um, and I have seen, unfortunately, that some students uh, with those professors that maybe don't uh, come off as harsh to students, like students will take advantage of that. And it's an unfortunate thing, but um, it definitely, it, it depends a lot on the professor, but I would say that probably 99% of professors will use the Socratic method. Wow. Wow. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> that's something to definitely expect. So <laughs> you have to be right? ready for everything all the time. Yes. It is, and that's why it's like, it definitely, um, you, you do feel heightened all the time because it's never something that you can just like walk into class. Like I still now, like I get butterflies going in because you never know, like it's fun, don't get me wrong, but it is something that you're constantly expecting and waiting for, so. I'd imagine it's fun to watch all the other people get called on, but then when it's your turn, it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's like I think also too. It's one thing that I had to kind of get through my mind is like no one likes to feel embarrassed, right? We hate when we don't have the right answer. But think about it. I mean, we've never learned this law before. Everything is new to us. They're obviously years ahead of us and experience our professors. Um, so we have to be forgiving of ourselves. And also, like you know, we're looking at other students that might get called on in class. Like they're going to look at us the same way. We're all in there together. So don't be afraid to not have the right answer. Of course, no, it's kind of funny. I didn't go to law school, of course, as I said, but I actually took a law school style class in undergrad. And uh, the pr the professor, he he was also the president of the university, so it was like a big thing. Like, and he he called on me, and I totally fumbled, and it was so embarrassing, but. At least I knew that like other people had also fumbled. And so although my cheeks did turn bright red and I started sweating and got uncomfortable, like everyone else had been through the same process. So it wasn't that big a deal. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.